Hi everyone, today we're going to show you how to make 2D and 3D shapes out of marshmallows and toothpicks. We'll also explain how this activity is great for your kids' hands and minds. What do we have? Wow, you are so fast! Look at all those 3D shapes you made! Let's go! Let's learn about shapes! Okay, we are going to talk about two-dimensional shapes. What's your favorite shape that you see? Mm, that one. What's that called? Square. What about you? What's your favorite shape? Do you know what this is called? Pentagon. Great. We're going to make 2D shapes, so that means we're going to take these yummy, what is it? Marshmallow. Marshmallows. And we're going to take these toothpicks and we're going to build some shapes. Toothpicks. Mini marshmallows. Shapes worksheet. First we'll start by making 2D shapes. Take your toothpick and your marshmallow and just simply create a shape. Let your kids have fun with it and play with whatever shape they want. Good job. All right, which one are you gonna make first, Mallory? That one. What's that called? A triangle. Very good. You can challenge your kids to copy a sheet that you made with different shapes or simply have them copy the shape that you made. Then they'll need to use precision to get in the exact right spot. It's not something that as adults we think about often, but it actually takes a lot of planning for a child to do this. How do we need to finish it? A stick. We would need a third side, and we would need to stick it in the marshmallow. Very good. What do we have? A triangle. Mallory's working fast over here. Can you hold it up and tell me what it is? <gasps> Pentagon. Building two-dimensional or 2D shapes is a great way of helping your kids work on their fine motor skills. Fine motor skills is just a fancy way of saying using hands and fingers well. Can you pick a colorful marker? And we're gonna fill these in. Tell me how many sides there are. Three sides, good. Four sides. What's next? And five sides, wow. Good job, Mallory. You did great. Once your kids get the hang of the two-dimensional shapes, simply add on to it to make three dimensions. And just like that, we're in the next dimension. Are you ready to build some 3D shapes? Yeah. We're gonna need more toothpicks for this. So toothpicks. now, instead of 2D, we're gonna make 3D. So I need you to make a cube out of the square. A cube. A cube, yeah. So can you take the toothpicks and put them straight up and down? We're gonna make a cube. That'll be 3D. How many more sides do you need? Two more sides, one here. Good job. Okay, and then we are gonna finish that square. Now this is 2D, but if we put it on top, what is that? A cube. Very good. Building three-dimensional or 3D shapes is a great way to up the ante. Let your kids get creative about how they add together the 2D shapes they made. Once your kids have the hang of the two-dimensional and three-dimensional shapes, challenge them to build structures. Okay, now that we have this cube, we're gonna build on top of it. We're gonna build, what, what should we build? A house. A house, that's a good idea. All right, Mallory, so if we're gonna make a house, I'm gonna give you some supplies, so it's gonna be a challenge. Instead of just taking this and putting it on top, we're gonna make it out of four toothpicks and one marshmallow. Are you up for the challenge? Yep. Okay. You're fast. And now what do you have? House. What? Mm -hmm. What do you have? House. A house? If you had that house, where would you want it to be? Where would you want to live? Beach. Oh, the beach, yes, I would agree. Finally, you can ask them what they're planning to do next. All of these questions will fire up their brains and grow their thinking skills. How high do you think we can get it? Oh no, my daddy's You think we can get it so high, Mallory? How high can we get it? All the way to the sky. You think so? Why don't we ask and see if brother and sister can help us? Yeah. Do you all want to call brother and sister and see if they want to come help us build? Yeah. All right, let's call them. One, two, three. Bye, Reese bye. and McLean. Reese and McLean. Reese and McLean, come help us. Hi. All right, y'all come over here. They're well, building. We're building shapes, and we want to see. Over here. Yeah, idea. How about we put toothpicks on the side so like it won't fall over? 
As a mom, one of the most fun parts is getting to see your kids work together as a team and collaborate together with their ideas. I think we should put a triangle all around it so it doesn't tilt and fall. See how fast you can build it so tall. Go, 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 go. They're going really faster. Okay, I'm gonna try to make it a little bit bigger on the uh -oh. bottom so it won't fall. We need to make this because it's so big, 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 uh -oh. big. Just keep using as many marshmallows as you can, Ren. Come help me. We only have two minutes left. We have to hurry. Mm -hmm. Who's gonna? Hurry. We have to make it taller than their castle. I'm so excited. You're so excited. Yes. Can. Are, can. are we gonna? Are we gonna build it so so high? Yeah. Well, show me how. Can you put the triangle on top? Maybe that's the the turret of your castle. Come on, Minnie. Make sure it stands Lord. up. Stronger on the oh, ten. No. Another fun idea is getting into teams and setting a timer. When we did that, they had a lot of fun competing and making a tower as high as they could. You guys did a great <laughs> job. All right. We did it. You guys we made a tall it. castle. Good job. Good job. And we hold again. Good job. I had to show me. Give up a high five. Say thanks, teammate. Thanks, teammate. Good job. Shake Mallory's hand. Say good, good job, job, Mallory. Look at their, look at their castle. <laughs> you would know how to shake hands, silly. Today we took marshmallows and toothpicks and made two and three dimensional shapes out of them. I think the most fun for my kids was just playing with toothpicks and marshmallows and things that they don't get to play with every day. We hope you and your family had fun with this activity and let us know how it goes in the comments below. Show us any tips or tricks and share them with the Show Me How community. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Carolyn. And this is my friend Phoebe. Hi. I love when Carolyn babysits because we always do fun craft projects together. One of our all-time favorites is a bouquet made out of egg carton flowers. I love it because the flowers never go bad. And I love to paint. In just a few easy steps, you can make your own bouquet perfect for springtime, Mother's or Father's Day. We'll show you how. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the supplies you'll need. You'll need acrylic paint, brushes, paper plates for palettes, scissors, water, the bottom of an egg carton, paper towels, and pipe cleaners. The first step is the best, paint. That's right, Phoebe. To get started, just paint the inside of your egg carton and then flip it over and do the outside. Each cup will be one flower, and you can paint them however you like. What color are you using? I'm making a lot of purple ones. Ooh, good choice. Why purple? It's my favorite. Plus, then it'll match my room. Hmm. When kids make simple decisions, like picking a paint color, they're actually developing their critical thinking skills. Now that we've finished the inside, let's flip it over and paint the outside. One reason I love crafting with kids is that it helps them with their hand-eye coordination, which is helpful for so many things like writing and playing sports. And plus, it's a great way for kids to practice counting in a fun way. One, two, Three, four, five. Great job. Thank you. Now that we're finished, let's let these dry for about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. While we wait, let's sing Merry, Merry, Quite Contrary. That's a flower song. That's a great idea. Merry, Merry, Quite Contrary, How does your garden grow? With silver bells, and cockle shells, and pretty maids all in a row. <laughs> Great job. Now that the cartons are dry, I'll poke little holes in the bottom with scissors. Okay. 
Now I'll cut out each flower. And I'll pick out the stems. This part is a bit tough, so an adult really needs to do it. Six for me. And two, three, four, five, six for Carolyn. Okay, now we'll add the stems. Just make a little loop around your finger like this so that the pipe cleaner stays in place. And there you go, for you. <laughs> Beautiful. The last step is cutting petals into the cups. You can cut a lot and have little petals like this. Or if you cut just a few times, you get big petals like this. Or you can leave them as is. I want big petals. <laughs> you got it. Here are your scissors. And there you have it. Beautiful egg carton bouquets, perfect for decorating or gifts. Try this project at home and let us know how it goes by hashtagging your photos and videos with Mother Goose Club or by tagging us here on YouTube. And tune into our YouTube channels to find lots of fantastic videos for you and your kids. Thanks for dropping by and happy crafting. <laughs>Hi, I'm Ivy. I play Baba Sheep on the Mother Goose Club. I love doing arts and crafts, especially with the kids I babysit for, like Lucas. Hi. In this video, we're going to show you how to make a bus out of a cardboard box. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna turn this cardboard box into a bus that we can ride in. Then we can pretend to drive all around the neighborhood, picking up all our friends. This is a super creative craft that you can do at home with your child. And by the end of it, you'll have a toy that your child can use for pretend play. This encourages creativity and imagination. For this craft, you'll need a large empty cardboard box, some white, yellow, and black construction paper, glue, adult scissors, safety scissors, crayons, and four paper plates for the wheels. Okay, let's get this bus rolling. First, we're gonna cut off the bottom flaps. The cardboard's a bit tough to cut, so an adult needs to do this step. Now we're going to fold in the top flaps to make the bus sturdy. To make the windows, we're going to use white paper. We're going to cut ours in half so that it fits better on the box. When you're doing this project at home, make sure that you're letting your child make all kinds of creative decisions. The more they do themselves, the more pride they'll feel when they're done. So how many windows do you think we need on each side? Three. Sounds good. Can I help with the cutting? Sure. Here's your scissors. If you feel comfortable letting your child use safety scissors, let them help with the cutting. It exercises the small muscles in their hands and develops fine motor skills. I did it. Awesome. Now let's glue these windows on. You almost done? Uh, just my last edge. We're gonna add two pieces of paper to the front to create the windshield. And great. Okay, are you ready to glue on the windows? Uh-huh. Okay, I'm gonna glue on the first one. Right here. Look good? Uh-huh. You ready to put it in the middle? Uh-huh. Let's put it right here. Great. Now let's give this bus some headlights. We can fold the piece of paper in half, and I'm gonna draw a circle. And then I'm gonna cut it out. If your child's like Lucas and loves to help, you can have him trace the circles himself. 
awesome. Wow, look at that circle. This helps them develop their hand-eye coordination. Almost done. Now let's glue the headlights on. Looks good. Awesome. To make the wipers, we're going to cut two long strips of black paper, like this. Awesome! Hey, which way do the windshield wipers go? That way. Good. Looking good. Awesome. Hey, we did it! This bus looks amazing, Lucas! Great job! But it's missing one thing. What? Well, what helps the bus move? The wheel! That's right! We're going to make them out of paper plates. We can either glue them on, as is, or color them however we want. Let's turn pink. That's a good choice. Now that we've glued these awesome wheels, you ready to put them on the bus? Uh-huh. Let's do it. I'll let you glue yours on first. Oh, that looks great. I'll pop mine on. And make sure it sticks. Looks good. Hey, let's take our bus for a spin. Yeah! Come on! The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. Try making a bus at home with your child and let us know how it goes by posting photos or videos and hashtagging them with Mother Goose Club. As always, we love to hear from you. So type in comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Okay, let's get this bus rolling. <laughs> Action. Damn it. Sorry. So how many windows do you think we need on each side? Three. Can I help? <laughs> <laughs> it's my fault because I was like... I went. Oh, okay. Stabbing. He knew I messed up. Yeah. <laughs> it exercises their fine motors... Oh, sorry. It exercises the small motors... Small muscles. It exercises their fine... It, ex it... Okay. The different things. Be nice. <laughs> and develops the fine. Now let's glue these headshot. Oh my. Black street, street. Black street. I want to wipe your windows. I want to wipe your windows. <laughs> oh gosh. Hi, I'm Jane and I love crafting with my kids, Alex and Emily because it helps them learn a lot about themselves and how to get along with others. These are important skills for success in school. I like doing crafts because you can turn trash into pretty things. And I love glitter. So in this video, we're going to show you a fun craft that turns empty water bottles and toilet paper tubes into musical shakers. With glitter. <laughs> yes, Alex, plenty of glitter. <laughs> for each shaker, you need an empty and dry water bottle, the short eight ounce kind works best, a toilet paper tube or paper towel tube cut in half, scissors, electrical tape, a funnel, and something to fill the bottle with. We're using beans to make noise and glitter to make it pretty, but you can use whatever you want. Little jingle bells, paper clips, rice, beads, and confetti, anything that'll fit. All right, let's get started. The first step is to fill your bottles a third of the way with beans and glitter or whatever you're using. I've learned early on that it's best to keep glitter in a contained region. It can get pretty messy. Put that lid on good and tight. We cut the tube next, right? That's right. Do you want to go first? Sure. Emily can do her own cutting, but usually I handle it for Alexandra, especially when it comes to thicker material like cardboard. 
All done. Now, can you put this over the mouth of the bottle? Step five, tape the tube to the bottle. Make sure to tape the tube very securely to the bottle. I know the next step. What is it? Decorating with tape. That's right. Yeah, and I want to use silver, blue, and white. Oh my goodness, okay, let's do it. Why don't we start with silver first? Okay. Great. How about I will cut the pieces of tape for you, and then you can tape them on the tube. Okay. Emily, are you done with the white tape yet? Can I use it? Sure. One thing I love about crafting is that it's a great way to teach your kids how to take turns and work together. Look, Mom, I made a heart. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so cool. I made one for you too, Alex. Thank you so much. So are you guys all done? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to try them out? Sure. sure. Let's do it. And there you have it. These shakers are pretty to look at and fun to play with. And when your kids use them as instruments, they learn about rhythm and patterns. Try this craft at home and let us know how it goes with a photo or video tagged Mother Goose Club or leave comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for other crafts, tips, activities, and more. Bye! Let's do it again. <laughs> From there? Okay. Okay. <laughs>